Team Kestova and YouTube, welcome back to a midweek civil PE exam example problem. I feel like the past couple weeks have stepped away from those through the holiday, but now that we are in the new year, we're in 2021, we need to get back on track, get back to our example problems, especially the ones for the PE exam, because we have plenty of other engineers in the team who are preparing for that exam come the springtime. So we want to make sure we get those Get those little guys under our belt, and today is a perfect example of that because we're going to be talking about welds, weld symbols, not so much the calculations and capacities and how to determine capacities, but more about nomenclature and how to you know, indicate what type of weld you want, how to call them out on plans. Before we begin, if you haven't yet already, I don't know why you haven't because seats are limited and this is the hottest class in the university, subscribe join join the team join other engineers from around the world coming together and trying to advance their careers together so don't forget about that turn on the bell don't know what it does but maybe we'll find out together if you do you know uh, leave a comment if you have questions as always or if you have a suggestion make sure you get it in there with uh, and reach out to me via the comments and then once we get to the end of today's problem if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up but only if you enjoyed it all right, let's get into it. The following weld symbol is indicated on a structural drawing. This guy right here. Which option shows the correct weld deposit for the weld symbol? So what do we have? We have a couple different things called out. So first of all, we have that symbol. This means that is a field weld. So that means it is not being welded, uh, either prefabricated in the shop. It is actually going to be put together these two pieces of steel, let's call it, and it's going to be welded in the field. So that's a little something. Side note, looks like it doesn't really pertain to us here. We have four options. Well, right off the bat, we know it's not A and we know it's not B. You might be going, well, why is that? That is because those are fillet welds. So we have this drawn like this. This indicates what type of welds you have. And a fillet weld would be that. So that is not what we have, so that's that's real straightforward. And what this symbol is called is actually a bevel. So this is a bevel weld. That leaves us with just C and D. And we have it called out here like this. I just want to indicate that for us. You might think, well, the side that the arrow points to is typically the side where the weld is happening. So you might be tempted to say, well, that means it's C, that would make sense. But in reality, what dictates which side of the element the weld goes on is actually the positioning of the symbol. So when the symbol is on the bottom, that means the weld is on the same side that the arrow is pointing to. So for our case here, if it was drawn like this here, that means the weld would be taking place here. So it would be C. But because the weld is, I'm going to draw it in green, the weld symbol is called out on the top of the line. That means it's actually the opposite of where the arrow is pointing to. So the weld is actually happening on the opposite side of that element, even though the arrow is pointing to the closer side, the closer face. So I know that can seem confusing, but that's really the key indicator here that they're uh, that they're describing to you. So it's going to be D. D is going to be our final answer here. So just a quick recap. And if you were, I want to say if you were less confusing because it can, they're trying to confuse you here. But in the professional world, if you had that happening, you would pretty much either do something like this called out because it's just the same side as the arrow and the arrow is pointing to the exact location of where you want that weld or you would also be smarter by just putting it to the side that you want so boom boom points to here and it would look something like that so unfortunately can't always be simple for these PE exam problems because they want you to know more in depth about that kind of stuff. They don't want you just to see something uh, and it be super, super easy and just give you the free point. They want you to think a little bit. So, you know, you got to stay on your toes. You got to think about each component as to breaking down 
this full symbol here and say, look at each piece of the symbol. So we're talking the actual weld type itself, you know, field weld or shop weld, what the arrow actually means. And in this case, they don't give you, they don't talk about the size of the weld or the length of the weld or anything like that or any uh, additional field notes. So they still keep it pretty basic, but it's the three big indicators. We're talking green, as I've called out, blue, as I've called out, and red, as I've called out for here. So those are the big three. Make sure you know uh, each of those areas of a weld call out, and that will get you through problems like this. The best place that I like to go for these problems is your uh, AISC steel manual. If you go to the welds chapter, it's an actual tab in your book where it's labeled as welds. So go to that thumbnail and you will find a chart within uh, that chapter that get, talks all about the nomenclature for um, welding symbols. So go there, take a look, tab it up. Go to my previous video where I've tabbed up my um, ASCE steel manual. That is one of the things that I tabbed because that was important for me when I took the exam. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep studying, stay healthy, and I will see everybody next week for another PE example problem. This is Rich with Kesva. I'll see everybody later.